What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're talking about what you should be doing at level 50 to keep progressing. Because guys, I'm gonna be honest, once you hit 50, you start unlocking all kinds of new alerts, new activities, and frankly, it is extremely overwhelming because suddenly, once you ding 50, you have access to the alerts menu. It's this little slide out and you just see all of these things happening and there's just a lot going on. So I wanted to make a video to help any fresh 50s, what you need to be doing and focusing on in order to progress the story and build up your character. So I'm gonna break this guide into three categories. One, what you need to do to progress the story. Two, what you need to do to increase your gear score. And three, what activities you need to be doing along the way. So first up, let's talk about story because honestly, that's the shortest and easiest one. So we'll get that out of the way first and then we'll dive into the more complex stuff shortly after. So at level 50, you're most likely still doing the Stern quest line over in Annika and you're probably about done. So I would say go ahead and complete Stern and that's going to unlock the quest chain introducing you to Vern. Now, once you're in Vern, you can complete that intro quest and get your first taste of end game activities, which we're gonna be diving into here in a second. Now, once you complete Vern, it actually is going to send you off to Shushire and give you a new ship that is able to break ice, an icebreaker ship. Now, once that zone is complete, it tells you to head to Rowandale and then continues onward after that. Now, there really isn't a lot to go into this. You just kind of continue following those blue quests. You're gonna finish all of your story arcs. Now, there are some item level requirements of traveling to Rowandale, which is the first one you're going to run into. You need to be item level 460 to unlock the introductory quest chain and get past the wall of Procyon in the ocean. And this is where all of those new activities will help. And guys, one thing too, I'm going through and saying, oh, you need to do Vern, then you need to do Shushire, then you need to do Rowandale. There's a lot that comes in between all of those. This is just talking about story progression and if there's anything that kind of bars you from going to the next area, which is why we talked about the eye level requirement. Now, also, once you hit 50 and you get to Vern, you're going to unlock the quest chain to earn your first awakening skill. I would highly recommend going and doing this sooner than later because it is a complete game changer. And then on top of your awakening skill, you get another regular skill that you can use in your rotation. So like for Sorceress, I got Doomsday, which is a giant meteor that smashes down, blows everything up. One of my favorite skills in the game. So this is something that, like I said, I would recommend doing as soon as you can. So that's it for story requirements. Let's go ahead and go into how to increase your item level and then talk about some of those end game activities you need to be focusing on. So in terms of our item level, our first goal is to increase our item level to 460 so we can continue the main story and open up even more end game activities in Rowandale. Now there are tons of ways to do this, right? Lost Ark is great about giving players variety. So if you're someone who really likes a buffet, then you can take a bite out of everything. If you're someone who just kind of wants a main course and knows what they want, then I have a method for you as well. So let's talk about gear upgrading because this is something that you're going to be doing a ton of now that you're 50. So upgrading your gear is a very simple process on the surface, but it does require some luck. So to get started, you wanna visit the upgrade vendor in any capital hub. You know, we have Vern here, so let's talk Vern. So once you're there, you can slot in your gear and use your upgrade materials to increase your gear score on that particular item. Now, there are a few different materials you need. You need Harmony Shards, which are used to polish your gear and get it ready to upgrade. These can be found in just about every in-game activity, quests, all that stuff. So you should be able to get a decent amount at first in a very short period of time. Then you also have Fragments and Leap Stones, which are used to actually upgrade the gear. And this is known as Honing. Now, again, these are dropped from just about everywhere, so they're not exactly hard to find. Now, at first, honing is going to be 100% successful every single time. You're going to say, man, this is too easy. And frankly, it's because it is. Because at a certain point, that number begins to drop and you will start to fail. And when you fail an upgrade, you're going to lose the fragments and leap stones that were consumed in the process. However, if you have enough, you can immediately try again. There isn't a lockout period or anything like that. And it doesn't lose the harmony shards. So it's still prepped and ready to go for the honing. You just don't have to polish it again. So this is where RNG can really kind of bite you if you have bad luck. I'm not known for having great luck and I've failed, you know, a ton of different times. So don't get discouraged. Just get some more materials and keep hammering on it until you power through. Now, there are some different ways that you can kind of offset that bad luck. 
you can use something called star's breath, which is a currency that will increase your success chance depending on how many you use. Now it only gives plus 2%. So it's not like it completely wipes out and you go from 80 to hundred, but it does give you a little bump just in case you need one. Now, after you fail, it does raise the success chance to 99%. So you're almost guaranteed an upgrade after you fail the first time. So ultimately don't get discouraged, continue kind of pushing along on this one and you're gonna be just fine. So you might be asking, do I keep this particular gear all the way to tier two then? Because all I'm doing is upgrading my existing gear. I'm not going out and grabbing any new stuff. And that is not the case. You actually need to continue looking for items that have better stats, whether that's blue gear or legendary gear to equip for your class, because this is going to make you more efficient and effective in combat. Plus the higher rarity gear has more affixes on it. So you obviously want more affixes that way you are better off. And also you probably think of a, di a different question. No, you don't have to upgrade your gear all over again, which is one of the best systems in this game. You can actually transfer all of that progress for free at the same armored upgrade vendor. You just click transfer that'll access a new system. And then from here, you wanna make sure that you equip the new item on your character. And then you wanna place that new item into the menu slot. At this point, you'll see any available items for transfer on the right hand pane. Click on the one you want and then click transfer. It will destroy the old piece in the process, but it'll transfer all of that progress over to your new piece. So now you have a shiny new piece of gear with all of the progress you invested into your last piece of gear and you're ready to get back out there and continue grinding. Now, before we move into the last section, there are a couple things I wanna talk about when it comes to your actual gear. So armor and weapon slots will determine your item level, while accessories will give you secondary stats like crit and specialization and engravings, which we'll get into another video because engravings are a whole different beast. So if you get a new accessory, that doesn't mean your item level will increase. However, if you get a piece of gear or a weapon, it might depending on if it's higher or not. So that's something to keep in mind because you know you see a legendary drop you get really excited you throw it in your character and you see your item level is the exact same well it's because it was a necklace and not a weapon or something like that so just keep that in mind as we go forward so lastly i want to talk about the activities you should be doing to progress so at level 50 you're gonna have access to tons of different things like that buffet i mentioned earlier right now, all of these are going to give you gear. They're going to give you upgrade materials that you can then pump into your gear to access new content. So the first one I wanna talk about is Chaos Dungeons. Now, these are similar to Greater Rifts from Diablo. You have a timed event that sends you against hordes of enemies. You have to kill certain amounts to progress to the next level. And then after three levels, you complete the dungeon and earn a reward. Now, all along the way, you're going to be receiving loot drops, which are item level 302. And this is going to be the building block to reach 460. You can do these twice per day. And if you miss a day, you'll actually get some extra runs the following day. So if you miss a day because you're a busy person, you come back, you're not necessarily far behind. You can just do four Chaos Dungeons that day instead of two. Now to complement Chaos Dungeons, we also have Abyss Dungeons, which are harder versions of dungeons that you did while you were leveling. Now these can be super brutal with pug groups. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. They are really hard with pug groups because you just, you can't communicate well enough. I spent an hour on Garam in the second Abyss dungeon because our pug wasn't able to communicate. Everyone was picking up the wrong orbs. It was just, it was a mess. So we ended up disbanding and I wasted an hour of my time. So I would highly recommend going in with a group of people that you know and can even talk to on voice chat because it just makes life a lot easier. But here's the deal, the rewards for these are really amazing and they're going to give you tons of upgrade materials gold and you get something called stones too and these can be traded for your first gear set which comes with a set bonus so you definitely want to make sure you do these because again you're getting materials new gear drops and that currency to purchase a really cool gear set then we have guardian raids so if you're someone who likes monster hunter then this one is literally exactly for you this is a group event to hunt down a beast and then slay them to harvest their soul, which is just so metal. And just like Monster Hunter, you don't get to see their health bar and you really have no way of knowing what is coming next. 
Now, the first one is super straightforward, but these get more intense as you progress through the Guardians. You can also do these twice a day, so make sure to take advantage of those. Now, next up are some things from Procyon's Compass. Now, these are a once a day event that you can do to get some gear, but they're also just a really fun time. So you have world bosses, which are how they sound. It's a big boss. You can slay wandering around an area for some gear and resources. You have ghost ships, which are similar to world bosses, but they appear in the ocean near those reaper areas. Next up are the chaos gates, which open up at certain times and let you into an area. This kind of functions similar to a chaos dungeon. You clear enemies and mini bosses, and then ultimately you're going to summon the main boss to fight. And this is really fun. On It's kind of funny. It reminds me of the Rift system from the MMO Rift. You get all these mini bosses spawning, all these trash mobs. You kind of kept wiping them out until the big Rift Guardian showed up and then you wiped them out. So cool stuff. And I highly recommend doing those. Now, lastly, our adventure islands. So these are islands that appear during a very limited window and you have a small amount of time to explore these. They can be found on the whirlpool icons on your map. Now, outside of those, you also have islands and Yuna's tasks that you need to do. So for islands, there are tons of these guys. I mean, there are tons of islands. Each one has its own little quest line and rewards that you can earn. And this is the main course that I was referring to earlier. So if you don't mind some grinding and you just want to do one singular thing, this is a fantastic way to spend a Saturday night to level up your gear. Now, some of these quests will send you to other islands, while some are going to be isolated and can be done on that one island alone. Now, like I said, these are pretty cool to do, and they offer you thousands of upgrade materials to use, plus some things like pirate coins. And I do have a video showing all of my favorite islands and the way to progress them to get the most bang for your buck. So if you want to speed up your upgrade process, I would consider checking that out. But I would also recommend, guys, just explore. Just have a good time, explore, see what the world gives you, because that is a really cool experience too. So if you wanna go fast, here's my video. If you wanna kind of explore and see what the world has in store for you, don't look at it and instead, just stop at all the islands that you come across and see what secrets they have. Now, in terms of Una's tasks, these are basically dailies and weeklies. So they're short quests, they give you some rewards, some upgrade materials, even some legendary uh, ability stones, which are really cool. And they also help build reputation with certain NPCs, which will then give you more rewards. So these are very important to do. I would highly recommend knocking all of them out per day, which is three. You can do three a day. Go ahead and take care of those. You're going to get some materials. They're extremely quick to do, and you're going to build that reputation. Now, lastly, you do also have PVP. Now, I've never done PVP in Lost Ark. I've never really looked into it. So I'm not going to touch on it in this video and potentially give you all misinformation. However, I would say go out to like Max Roll, go out to Papunika. They're going to have some PVP stuff out there or at least touch on it. That way you understand what you're getting into. So folks, that is it. This has been a crash course on what you should be doing at level 50. Now, like I said, this game has tons to offer and this might seem like a really short list. But every single one of these activities has so many layers underneath it that you're going to be spending lots of time just exploring one or two of these. Now, I hope this has helped give a little bit of guidance on where to go, what to do, especially at level 50, because I know it's overwhelming. And hopefully this has kind of cleared some of that noise out for you. So if you're looking for more Lost Art content, consider subscribing. I have a lot in store for this game. And honestly, we're just getting started. So thank you, everyone. Big, big thank you. This has been Vulcan, and I will talk to you on the next one.